Hi, and welcome to Meetings in Math. You are here for section 1.4, Rewriting Equations and Formulas. Our essential question for today is, explain how to solve for a variable when there is more than one variable in an equation. Today, you will need your Jaguar dots on section 1.4, something to write with, either a pen or a pencil. You may find a calculator helpful, along with a piece of scratch paper. And as always, bring your problem solving skills. So here we are on section 1.4. Typically, when we're looking at these, we're either going to be looking at a formula or an equation that has more than one variable, and we need to solve it for whatever variable it is that they tell us to solve for. So on this first one, negative 2x minus 3y equals 6, we need to solve for y. They tell us right here, solve for y. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to put in our road or our divider so that we separate it into the two columns. Because what we want to do then is we want to identify which side is going to be our y side and then what side is going to be anything but y's. And so let's go ahead and circle our term that has the y in it. And the term that has the y in it is right here with this negative 3y. So this is going to be our y side. And then over here is going to be anything but y. And in this case, anything but y would be our numbers and our variable of x. And so we've identified what needs to be on the left side and what needs to be on the right side. And if we take some time to set that up in the very beginning, it makes all of the problems a whole lot easier to do. So now that we've identified what needs to stay and what needs to go, we can move it just like their numbers. When we move an entire term, we move terms with addition and subtraction. So the term that does not belong here would be this negative 2x, because this term stays because it's a y term, which means this term needs to go. So we move the term negative 2x by adding 2x to both sides. And when we add 2x to both sides, negative 2x plus x, 2x is 0. And then we have this 6 plus 2x which then would just be 2x plus 6. And the reason we say 2x plus 6 instead of 6 plus 2x is we always put our variable terms first. And since we have our negative 3y left, we just write negative 3y, and we don't forget our equal sign because this is an equation. And let's now look at this, and we are well on our way to solving this problem. Now, the next thing we want to do is we still want to identify our variable term. And here it is, right here is our variable term that we are solving for. We want our y's on this side and everything else here. Now we are left with just a single term that has y. So now we can start breaking that term apart. So remember, I couldn't do anything to break that term apart until it was a single term. And now it is. So this is negative 3 times y. So just like before all of the other problems when we were doing it, what undoes multiplication, division. So we're going to go ahead and divide both sides by negative 3. And when we divide both sides by negative 3, negative divide 3 divided by negative 3 would be 1. And we'll deal with that in just a little bit. So this side here is y. This is good news. We were asked to solve for y. And now we have y isolated. So I know whatever this here ends up being, that's going to be my answer, and I can stop. So now that we've gotten that far, what we're being asked to do is to simplify this right here. So now we're going to take a little sidestep and talk about how do we simplify something that looks like that. Well, really what this is saying is 2x divided by negative 3 plus 6 divided by negative 3. Each part of that is being divided, or each term is being divided by negative 3. 2 doesn't divide by negative 3 very nicely, so we'll just leave that as 2 thirds, or a negative 2 thirds x. We'll pull the x out because it's something that we're going to be doing later in the school year. And then we go ahead and we simplify 6 divided by negative 3, and 6 divided by negative 3 is a negative 2. So plus a negative 2. So what we did, again, was we separated this into a negative 2 thirds x. And then the 6 divided by negative 3 is a negative 2. But we don't go around saying plus a negative 2. We just say minus 2. So this is our answer. 
So when we go to do these problems, we just go through them like we did all the other problems, except for we're moving that X or that Y around and it just looks a little bit silly. All right, let's go ahead and look at problems A, B, C, and D. And for these ones, we're going to be solving for different variables. In A, we're asked to solve for Y and B, X and C, F and in D, W. So you always want to pay attention again to what it is that you're being asked to solve for. So I'm going to go ahead and all of them so I can put my highlighter away. I'm going to go ahead on all of them right now and I'm going to put in my roads and now I can put my highlighter away. And what I want to talk to you about now is something, especially for these problems, that helps us kind of move through the problems a little bit easier and it's called masking and it's why I asked you to have a piece of scratch paper. It doesn't have to be a big piece of scratch paper. I just took a half sheet and I cut it and then I folded it into a quarter piece. And what masking does, it is it allows our brain to rest a little bit because there's a lot going on up here and sometimes when we're being asked to do something that has a lot of moving parts and a lot of things that don't really go away, they don't make a whole lot of sense because there's so many things happening, we can do something called masking. I'll show you what it means in this next problem. So again, we're being asked to solve for Y. So the first thing I want you to do is I want you to identify that variable term and I want you to circle it. And here it is. So no more Y's. So we're going to put Y's on this side. And the other things we have left are numbers and X's. So this side is going to be your X's and your numbers. And that's what that hashtag means. It means a number. And we're going to start moving things around. So I can't do anything without 5Y until that X is gone. So how do we move a negative X or a negative term? The opposite of subtraction is addition. So we will add X to both sides. And so the 5Y is just going to drop down. And negative X plus X is zero. And so now on this side, I'm going to have X plus 10. So I did that step and it's done. Now this is where the masking really is helpful and it does help us. Is you can take this piece of paper and you can now cover up what you've already worked with. Now it does get rid of the which side's which. You might want to rewrite this side as Y's and this is X's and numbers just so you can have it. But now the problem is simpler. Your brain has a chance to rest and not process all that stuff that was up above. And you can ask yourself if this side's only supposed to be Y's, what needs to go? And what needs to go is your five. So that's five times Y. And how do we undo multiplication? But with division. So we'll divide both sides by five. So this is Y equals. Okay. Now there is a little one hanging out here in front. So remember, we're going to do this right here. So this is going to be one fifth X. And then we are going to do this right here, which is a positive 10 divided by five. So plus two. That's usually one of the big mistakes that gets made. But then you're done. So that's what masking lets your brain do. It lets you kind of forget what, what happened up above because you're done with it. You've already done it. And so you don't need to see it anymore. So let's do one more together. The, I'd like you guys to identify what it is that you are trying to solve for. And then what side are you doing on the left and what are you doing on the right? So you're being asked to solve for X. So this changes. So I'm solving for X. So this side's going to be X's. And this is going to be Y's and numbers. So if my variable term is an X, that means that negative four Y has to go away. So the opposite of subtracting a four Y is adding a four Y. So we'll add four Y to both sides. So now I have four X because nothing combined it with that one, but negative four Y plus four Y would be zero. And then I have four Y plus one. Those are not like terms. So they're just going to stay that. And again, this is where the masking is really nice. I'm going to go ahead and take my paper and make it a little bit smaller so I don't have to rewrite things. There you go. And now I'm going to mask that up above. So now that I've taken some time to mask that, 
And if I want this height just to be an X, what does not belong there? The four. So four times X, the opposite of multiplication is division. So I'm gonna divide both sides by four. Now I am dividing by this four right here. So now I have X right here. Now be careful. 4y divided by 4. 4y divided by 4. Well, 4 divided by 4 is 1, so this is just going to be y. Then I have to do 1 divided by 4. Now be careful, that's 1 divided by 4. That does not go to 4, that is 1 divided by 4. So your answer is x equals y plus 1 fourth. All right, I'd like you to try the next two on your own and then come back and see how you did. All right, now that you've tried them, did you identify that you were looking for an F, which means this was going to be a negative 6F? So Fs went on this side, and on this side was numbers and H. And on this one, did you identify, since you were looking for W, oh, on this side was gonna be W, and on this side you were going to have numbers and V? and that's gonna be okay. If you didn't get that and you wanna pause and try again, go ahead and pause and try again. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and fast forward and work through these quickly. I'm not gonna talk through them, but I'm gonna show you the work as I go. I will not be masking while I do these so that you can see all of the work together at the same time. So that's how you do those last two problems. Make sure that you slow down, that you pause it, if you need to watch it again, but make sure you understand how to do those because we're gonna be practicing some more of those later. So what do you do when you have one that has a lot of variables? You do the exact same thing. This right here is the standard form of a linear equation and it's ax plus by is equal to c and we're gonna solve this one for y. So the very first thing I want to do is I actually want to rewrite the equation. ax plus by is equal to c and now we can start working with it. And we start off by doing the same things that we've done before. We go ahead and we make our columns so that we can identify what are we solving for and then we isolate that variable and then everything else is going to go to that other side. So they asked us to solve it for y. So go and find that variable term. It's right here. So we're gonna have this side be our y and then this side's gonna be anything but y. So that would be an a and an x, a b and a c. So a, x, b and c. So those are the types of things we're gonna be looking for on that other side. And we're gonna do this just like we've been doing all of the other problems. So this variable term, we're not going to do anything with that until this variable term has been moved. So how do we move a positive ax? Well, we subtract it from both sides. So that right there would be zero and we'd be left with our by right here equals, and then this right here, and there's really nothing to do with this because they're not like terms and so we're just going to write it down. So it's a negative ax plus c. And now we have our variable term b, y. And so to break up variable terms like this, this is b times y, and how do we undo multiplication? But with division, and so we will divide both sides by b. And so b divided by b is just a one, and so we have y equals negative ax plus c divided by b. 
and we want to double check, we want to make sure is this side have our Y isolated? It does. And is this side only containing A, X, B, and C? It does. There's no Y over here, which means this is our answer. So the hardest thing when we're doing these problems is we don't necessarily know when to stop. Our brain is going, well, I should simplify it. I should do more with it. But there's really nothing more I can do with this because there's no numbers to simplify. There's no combining like terms that I can do. That is just what the answer is. It is a formula. It's not pretty. It's just there. If we really wanted to do something more to it, we could always go negative A over B X plus C over B and make it look a little bit different. It means the same thing, but it's not helpful. In fact, it makes it even messier. So you would just leave it like this. So today we spent most of our time rewriting equations, depending on what it was, the variable that they told us to look for. It's really useful for formula work. Um, we didn't do many formulas today, just one formula, but that's where we spend most of our time working with these kinds of problems. What I would like you to do is I'd like you to write down two main ideas that you kind of got from this. And I'd like you to write it down next to the problems. So even main ideas could be stuff like this, where you, oh yeah, I, when I'm dividing, I have to remember to divide both terms on the top. And I want you to write it right next to the idea that it comes from. So I just gave you one of them that you could possibly write down that when you divide, you have to divide both terms on the top by the number on the bottom. And so you could write that right here. And then I want you to come up with one more on your own. For example, how do you know which one to solve for? Remember, we're isolating that variable. So something that is really important to you that you need to remember. And I want you to write it down next to the concept that you are talking about. All right. Thank you so much for joining us today. And remember, be kind to one another because we can all use some extra kindness in our lives. Bye for now.